Hello, my name is Lily. I'm one of the history curators at Leamington Spa Art Gallery and Museum. Today I'm going to talk to you about Francis Yarn, who was a sculptor and an art collector, and he was one of the most significant forces in shaping our decorative art collection in the early 20th century. I hope you'll enjoy looking at some of his collection with me. These two portraits show the two sides of Francis Yarn's life. He grew up in Stoke-on-Trent, where he began his career as a potter's modeller. Then he went on to train as a sculptor at the Royal College of Art in the early 1890s. He taught sculpture at Sheffield Art School from 1906 until 1925. On the right you can see him at home with his collection. He's looking at a print and in his right hand you can see that he's holding a portfolio which is full of more works on paper. He's surrounded by an eclectic mix of objects, including sculptures, furniture, metalwork and ceramics. Francis and his sister Henrietta moved to Royal Leamington Spa in 1947 and gradually, over the next two decades, nearly 350 different things from Jan's collection made their way into the museum. Some were gifts, some were purchased from Jan or from his estate and some were bequests. So let's have a look at just a few of them. This is one of three sculptures by Jan, which are now in our collection. He specialised in allegorical and mythological figures rather than portraits of named individual people. He exhibited at major galleries, particularly in the north of England, and his most prominent work is the figure of Victory on the Yorkshire and Lancashire Regiment War Memorial in Sheffield. But in the context of our collection, his own sculptures are less significant than the decorative art objects, so let's look at those now. Francis Yarn's collection of 18th century English drinking glasses was exceptional, both in terms of its size and quality. With support from the National Art Collections Fund and the Victoria and Albert Museum, we were able to buy 166 glasses from Yarn in 1955. They range from substantial, thick-stemmed baluster glasses to the most delicate cordial glasses, and they demonstrate a whole variety of decorative techniques, including engraving, enamelling, twists of colour in the stems and cut glass. In contrast to his glass collection, Jan's collection of ceramics ranged over a longer time period and a wide variety of different styles. These examples are both from Staffordshire in the mid-18th century, when the region was at the heart of the Industrial Revolution. On the left is a plate with the tortoiseshell style decoration often described as Wealdon ware, because it was developed by the pioneering potter Thomas Wealdon. On the right is a mug made from two different colours of clay which were marbled together during the making process to create a complex, unique pattern. These two pieces also come from Staffordshire but were made much later during the early 19th century. The figure on the left is Pomona, the Roman goddess of orchards and fruitfulness, holding a horn of plenty. The vase on the right would have been used to hold wooden spills for lighting lamps and candles. It was made by Spode, one of the most prominent ceramics factories in Stoke-on-Trent. As well as Staffordshire wares, we also have several pieces of Delft ware from Jan's collection in the museum. Delft ware is a type of pottery with a white tin glaze and painted decoration, which was first made in Holland to imitate Chinese porcelain. Dutch potters brought the techniques to England and this example was made in Bristol in the mid-18th century. Jan's collection clearly meant a lot to him personally, particularly as it connected to his family roots in Stoke-on-Trent and the pottery industry. I think that comes across most clearly in the group of lustreware pots which he bequeathed to the museum in memory of his sister Henrietta. Francis and Henrietta lived together for much of their adult lives and the delicacy and charm of objects like this are a beautiful memorial to his love for her. Finally, I'll end with this extraordinary Japanese print, made around the same time as the Lusterware mug, but a world away in terms of sophistication and complexity as well as geography. Perhaps this might have been one of the prints in the portfolio that Jan was looking at when he had his portrait painted. It was one of a group of prints which we bought from Jan's estate after his death in 1968. And more than 50 years later, he still remains the most influential figure in our decorative art collection. I hope you've enjoyed sharing his legacy with me today. Thank you for listening.